Hello everybody and welcome back to Linda's Corner. I'm sure that you've all come back again because of the excitement of the mighty Linda. The mighty Linda. Even more exciting than that this time is the concept of demand management. Call it demand management, call it demand intake, call it ideation, call it whatever you want. It's that problem that we've all been living with where we have way too many things to deliver than we're actually capable of delivering. So how the heck do we manage all that stuff? That leads me nicely into the first question, almost as if I planned it this way. Wow. So Linda, I'm working with clients who've got hundreds of different users of the systems. They've got thousands and thousands of really good ideas that I know would help, but that we can't do all of them. You can imagine the list is massive. How can Clarity help us manage all that vast amount of data and bring it into something that we can actually control and review it? Well, we've got lots of ways that we can help. So now you should be able to see my screen. Yep, we um, see it. Good. <laughs> I figured you probably did, but anyway. Um, so there's lots of different ways, but let me start with, um, first of all, eliminating the Excel spreadsheet, right? Or whatever system people are using. using. So if I click it and go to ideas, you notice this is kind of like a big, you know, Excel spreadsheet on steroids here. I've got lots and lots and lots of columns. Um, but the, the thing that you want to be able to do is you want all your users to be able to enter their data into one place, right? Mm -hmm. So transparency so that everybody can see it. So I can just click the add row, the circle plus here, and let's do Oracle upgrade. Upgrade the Oracle application. All right, girl, spell right here. Um, <laughs> and then I can, yeah, I can categorize it, whether it's small, you know, major, you know, whatever idea type that I have set up. Same thing with corporate strategy. Maybe I want to list that as an attribute. Um, maybe this one's to optimize back office or while the, you know, customer. I can also pick a blueprint as I go along, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Let me just scroll a little bit further. So I don't really have to enter any more data than that, um, but I can, because you can see the row has already taken its place. If I click on yep. details, I can certainly add more data, right? I can do um, plan cost if I want, um, plan budget. I mean, I, I can enter, you know, a lot more data here. Um, but, you know, first of all, let's just capture my idea. So that's kind of the first thing that I sort of want to do. Now notice that there's a there's limited fields over here. If I do configure, I've got a whole lot more fields that I can bring in. Right. So this is kind of where blueprints come in because as a Clarity admin, I probably want to select certain fields for certain, you know, demand generation, right? So that as the user is doing the intake, they're only filling out what we say we need. You know, for a committee, it's kind of that just-in-time thing, right? Why add a business case and why add all this data if you don't need it? So let me go into administration here for just a minute, and let's look at blueprints. Um, so here's, here's a, a, a blueprint that I copied and created, and it's for new product development. So in this case, I'll just edit it. What I want to do is I'm going to click on the modules and I'm going to drag over business case. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and say show it in details fly out. Now the reason I want to do that as an administrator is I want to make sure that the ideas that are collected for new product development, right, are specific um, and that I can capture other things. So if I click on this one that's new product development and go to details, you will notice um, over here, I've got a whole nother little tab where I've got business cases. Yeah. Um, so I can go in and review those. So I just kind of wanted to point that out, that if I've got different fields and things, like down here, a problem and solution that I want to gather, but I want to keep it limited and small, right, just in time, because it's got to go through committee and, and things of that yeah. nature, I can do that. So those are some of the fast ways you can kind of get started. Cool. And it looks so similar to Excel, so people are going to be comfortable using it. 
But of course, it's so much more powerful than Excel. And, and of course, all your data is integrated in that central database and, and makes life so much easier to actually manage this stuff. So I don't know what else people would want. But of course, it's not just about that capturing stuff, Linda. We've got the need to prioritize, to weed out those ideas that, that aren't going to be successful. And with so many ideas, we've got so much data, there's got to be a better way to track those value criteria to determine which idea fits not only to our strategic vision, but also aligns with the financial criteria as well. How can Clarity help to manage and prioritize those ideas once we've actually captured them? It's great having them in, in that sort of spreadsheet view, but how do we sort of separate the wheat from the chaff, if you like? Sure. Let me share again. Do you remember this is our common component grid? So I've got filters, I've got different views up here, and then I've got some saved views as well. Um, in this case, let's go to demand prioritization. Now, the reason I, I kind of want to go to this one, we'll just discard changes from my last view there, is I've added lots of columns here, right? So I've got a lot of different ways if I scroll over and don't go too fast so that you can follow me here. I've added idea priority, corporate priority, architectural fit. That's really mm -hmm. key for us, right? We gotta make sure that it fits whatever the architecture is. Um, business alignment, I mean a vast amount. Um, plan costs. Now, I, even though it looks like a vast amount on the Excel spreadsheet, it's not too bad. I mean, it might be like, you know, 20 columns. Enough that, again, based on this blueprint, blueprint template, once we prioritize and we look at things, maybe it's by business alignment, then we can easily export this and send it over to the committee, right? But the committee can have access as well and can look at, you know, whatever it is they want to do. So I'm also going to do priorities uh, filters up here. Let's go ahead and do idea priority is high, corporate priority is high, architectural fit, let's say medium and high. So now my list is a little smaller. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe your boss has said, hey, submit your top ones that you really want to you know, get approved and, and working as a project. So this helps me to sort the list and to get to it you know, much faster. Now, remember when I, I kind of said, hey, there's that um, business case module. Um, let me go back. I'm going um, to close out of these just for a second because I know which one I actually have it on. Um, okay, let me go to another one, the launch OD. Okay, so if I go here, um, I also added a business case module. So as I click on that module and I do expand, notice that I've got draft business case. And over here, I can actually look at, so if I was the committee and doing approvals, I could look at this draft business case. And maybe then it goes through committee and they've asked for a few more things and, and they like you know the areas of um, customer satisfaction and risk reduction and everything else that I've highlighted. They want another business case. So here's a second pass at a business case. So this is nice because I can include that right here, you know, in, in my details. I can modify it really quickly and then I can get it back to the committee. So I think that those are some ways that really help you um, get in and decide, well, what what is the best, you know, to send to the committee and what are the ones that I am most passionate about, right? Um, so that's pretty key for me anyway. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And it feels a lot more collaborative than the normal process where, <laughs> you know, half the time it feels like a tennis match, right? You do your work and then you throw it over the net at the committee and if they like it, that's great. Otherwise, they'll throw it back and you've got to do more work. And it doesn't necessarily feel like everybody's working together, whereas here, it feels a lot more like everyone's pulling in the same direction to, to get the right initiatives approved, which is exactly what we want to do, of course. Let's talk about this ideas committee or, or whatever you call it in your organization. And that process of, of working through and determining what are the priority initiatives, what are those ideas that are going to be approved and actually move into the investment stage. 
even then, we can have quite a long list of initiatives. You know, some of my clients are, are very large organizations with very large investment budgets. Is there a way that Clarity can help to quickly convert an idea to an actual working investment without a huge amount of staff involvement to, to rekey and add in additional details and, and all that stuff? Is that something Clarity can help with? Absolutely. So let me go back and show you a couple of different ways that we can do this. We'll go to the board view because I think this one's a little bit easier to see what's going on. Um, from here, you know, I've got different columns and, and different things going on, but what's key here is you see how this one's unapproved. This one is mm -hmm. submitted for approval. Um, this one's already been converted. So the first thing I really need to do, at least in, in the world of clarity, because we do have, and you can add extra workflow processes and things like that, right? But you can't convert anything that's in an unapproved state. So maybe this is one that the committee approved, and so I'm good to go. And um, so now I want to. I want to. Oops, I'm so sorry. And so now I want to change that. So I'm going to submit for approval, and you can see now it's changed its status. Submitted for approval. So when it was in an unapproved stage, I can't go straight to uh, approval because our rules are it's got to be submitted first. So nice try, let's go to the yeah. grid. Yeah, I <laughs> know. Nice try. It's early in the morning here, so I'm probably just not awake. Um, so now from here, I've got this status column, right? And if I sort these, all these are approved and these are incomplete and all these submitted for approval, all I have to do is click on right click and um, I can you know, change them to the next state. In this case, submitted for approval can't be approved yet, right? You've got, I mean, it can't be converted to a project. So I've got to take an approved one and now you can say convert to project. So when I do that, the other kind of slick thing is, is I can select a template, which is pretty handy. And then I can also copy the team if I set that up and copy financial. Because you know how some companies, uh, um, you know, I worked for one company where all of your new demand generation there, there was time and effort put into that business yep. case, right? So they wanted to capture all of that labor. So we put those costs in financials and a very small, you know, limited team. In some cases, it was just myself. And then you can convert those as well, um, which is great, uh, just by hitting create. Now, it still keeps the demand, that idea in ideation, so that you can keep track of it. But look. It automatically, based on the template I had, yeah. went ahead and converted everything for me. Um, so, yeah, I, I think there's lots of cool ways we can do that. That's yeah, that's so much easier. Um, and even though this isn't a, a session in this corner on governance, we saw system governance there when, when you get these rebellious users like Linda who try and play fast and loose with the rules. The system won't let them. So, there you have it. Demand management, demand intake, ideation, call it what you want. That process of capturing ideas, reviewing them, prioritizing them, managing them, and then ultimately moving them across into projects or investments or whatever you want to call it in your organization. So simple, we did it in what, 10, 12 minutes there. Um, just a few sort of short clicks and you can easily see how clarity can contribute to the effectiveness and efficiency of that planning and demand management process which is you know really what it's all about more effort focus on actually delivering stuff as opposed to planning stuff which is what we want to do linda it's been awesome visiting your corner again and, and despite the fact that now you know i've seen so many corners in your place i can't believe it, i haven't yet found a dust bunny anywhere so you know really good job on cleaning those corners as well everybody join us again next time we're going to explore yet another linda's corner and we'll learn even more about the wonderful things that clarity can do thanks everyone and have a great day perfect thanks everyone